Okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so our next speaker is Anna Hripunova Bauchi, University of Bielefeld, Germany. Please, Anna, you have 20 minutes. Uh, thank you very much for introduction and uh, for the opportunity to give this uh, talk and the very nice uh, conference uh, dedicated to addition uh, and uh, I like this uh, picture very much, so I think uh, the smile and uh, <laughs> very nice picture just I put it here so uh, thanks um, a lot one more time and uh, let me start because I have only 20 minutes. Uh, well, my talk will be also about weighted equations and thanks to the talk. Uh, uh, of um, uh, the first part of the day by uh, Chechkin. Uh, we uh, already uh, a little bit familiar with the weighted equations, so uh, that's why I can skip uh, some of the um, uh, parts. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, the equation uh, which is uh, which I will call weighted Laplacian because I will also consider the nonlinear uh, counterpart of this equation, and uh, this is a equation with the right hand side in the divergence form. So the alternative formulation uh, could be uh, when I also put the weight to the function f. This is for the technical reasons. Sometimes uh, it's good also to have uh, this weight also in the right hand side of the equation. And this, uh, the equations we are interested in, uh, uh, the uh, vectorial, this means that we are, uh, deal with the system. So here A of X uh, could be the matrix. And uh, the, um, um, the part where it will be uh, um, a different setting, as I was say, as in the talk about the Remba problem, uh, will be that our weight uh, is non-uniformly elliptic. It could uh, be degenerate, so you will see it uh, later. So the problem we study is so-called maximal regularity. What do we mean here? So this is the estimate of the following type, uh, having a function space X uh, on the right-hand side, on the data, uh, can we say that the gradient of the solution measured in the same space uh, is called the right hand side? And uh, here, uh, maybe the uh, um, interesting part uh, uh, is that we want to have here the same uh, space. So this is a kind of a full transfer of regularity from the one uh, side to the other for some uh, space X. And uh, we also consider the weighted P Laplace equation, which we formulate in this in this way. Uh, so uh, here, uh, not going to the details, so if p is equal to and, uh, um, uh, and the uh, matrix m standing here is uh, written in the form of some a to the power 1 divided by 2, uh, this um, case is reduced to the weighted Laplacian, so to the, to the linear equation of this type. Uh, so already, uh, as well mentioned today, celebrated Myers property and uh, celebrated a counter example or example to the uh, uh, to the regularity properties of weighted equations. So this is um, example was formulated by Myers by himself in the same uh, paper where he proved uh, the small integrability property. And uh, what is this example about? So this is example. Uh, this example is about. Um, constructing uh, the weight, and here is the weight. So this is um, a vectorial example uh, in a two dimension. Uh, and the harmonic function, the weighted harmonic function. So uh, we see that uh, this weight and uh, the function, the gradient of the function gives uh, zero divergence with the following property. So uh, the, last, uh, uh, the last one, uh, this uh, limited uh, regularity will be interesting for us. So uh, the gradient of U belongs to the space uh, L2 divided by epsilon infinity. This is Martin-Kevich space. This means that the gradient uh, of U is in LQ, if and only if this uh, power is smaller than two divided by Q. So here you see that the uh, high integrability of the gradient is uh, limited by this uh, exponent here and cannot go to infinity. And those are uh, basic properties, which we know. So the big solution is W12. Uh, using um, Mozernish or the Georgie technique, one can get also heard a continuity. And this weight is uniformly elliptic in the sense of this, uh, in the sense of this uh, estimate, which shows that it is uh, bounded from above and from below by the minimum and maximum eigenvalue of the matrix M. 
And here, uh, so the idea is that if this property holds um, this, um, in, in the sense limit of integrability, holds even for such good and uh, uniform elliptic matrices, this also, of course, will be for more general classes of weights, uh, uh, which we are interested in. Uh, so a little bit of uh, history. So this equation with weights, so equations with coefficients, uh, of course, uh, um, uh, started a lot uh, during the uh, last uh, 50, 60 years. Uh, and uh, if um, now you consider this equation uh, and um, A is uniformly elliptic and uh, one do not assume anything else about the continuity of this function, so no assumptions on the coefficient. So this is just uniformly elliptic. So this is what uh, is called Miles property. So the gradient belongs to the L2, which is um, uh, natural space plus delta. And this uh, small uh, high integrability was uh, also uh, investigated by Myers. Then if one assume more, so you have a uniform elliptic matrix plus, con plus continuous, this is a classical result that the gradient belongs to LQ for any Q. And then this continuity assumption could be relaxed in the sense, so uh, there are many references for, for the systems. This is uh, the result proved by de facto. So if A is uniformly elliptic and of vanishing mean oscillation structure, so it has good uh, as this continuities, but uh, not too much, let's say, because this uh, space is a uh, closure of the space BMO. Uh, so this is, uh, in the sense that it's continuous, but uh, very slightly. So we want also to include uh, here, so the goal will be to include the degenerate weights, which could be a zero. Well, so the prototypic example is the power function. So this is x to the power plus minus delta for some delta bigger zero. And uh, this is, um, uh, this is uh, what we assume. So the equation uh, is uh, as usual, but we replace this um, condition of uniformly continuity by the condition of degenerate ellipticity. And uh, you see here the difference is that uh, uh, here we, we have a function u, um, which is defined as a spectral norm of this uh, matrix A. Uh, which, of course, uh, uh, makes uh, this situation possible to generate. And uh, this is the other way how to write down this condition. So this is uh, equivalent to um, the um, condition number of this matrix to be bounded. Uh, and we also work in the Sobolev weighted Sobolev spaces. Uh, so this is... Um, mm, uh, this is in the slide I present very slight result by Fabes, Kenick, and Serapioni, uh, where they uh, proved that if the weight uh, belongs uh, to the so called Mackenhaupt class, A2, and the right hand side uh, is uh, nice enough, roughly speaking, then the U belongs to C0 alpha for some alpha bigger than zero. And uh, there they use this uh, Michael condition a lot. So this is uh, how this condition looks like. Uh, so you take the supremum over all balls and here we have the mean value of uh, mu and the mean value of mu uh, to the power minus one and this uh, the supremum should be finite. So this setting now includes, uh, of course, uniformly uh, the degenerate uh, weights uh, for some small um, for small uh, epsilon here. And what we aim for, we aim for the estimate of such types. So for the transfer of uh, regularity from the gradient to uh, from the right hand side to the solution of this equation. So here. Um, this is uh, some very nice result. Uh, we are uh, Chaum and Geshem Fine uh, started also uh, gradient estimates for the Mackenhub classes, for the weighted Mackenhub classes. And uh, they assumed that the uh, weight um, belongs uh, to um, this uh, space. Uh, this is the uh, space of bounded mean oscillation with a measure. And this measure here, uh, so this is here, you see this is the not a mean value in the usual sense, but mean value with respect to this measure mu. And um, this also the result, so you see this is the result how it's formulated. So if the matrix A 
as a small uh, BMO norm, this uh, special BMO norm, uh, then there is the transfer of higher uh, of uh, integrability from Jules. Great. Uh, but unfortunately, there is no uh, precise dependency of how this delta, uh, delta, this smallness parameter, and the power Q are connected to each other. And uh, I will show you now the result which has this precise dependency. So this is the main result. Uh, so our result uh, excuse is Excuse me, uh, mm -hmm. Anya. Uh, 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 previous slide, uh, please. Uh, previous slide? Yes. Uh, if possible. Yeah, it is written BMO2 mu and then BMO1 mu. What is the difference? Uh, yes, yes. The, 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 um, uh, the thing is that they have uh, two papers. And I think uh, they started first uh, from uh, this um, norm uh, BMO1, and then later they obtained this this result for the space BMO2. So this is this is how it is. So uh, the, this is uh, so this is the definition. What is uh, the space BMO1, and this is their condition. Yes. So you need to plug uh, in uh, here uh, instead of uh, one. Uh, you need to have uh, here the power of. Uh, uh, here you need to have the power two here. Yes, the power two. So a of x minus uh, mean rate of a b to the power two. So this two stands uh, here for for the power. So uh, maybe I should write here it in the way that this is some b or more p space. Yes, and then. Is okay. that okay with the answer? Yes, thank you. Okay, so this is uh, our result. Uh, so, uh, well, the difference is our result would have standard uh, norm. There is no measure inside. So, this is how the space B more is defined. And the uh, condition we have is that the logarithm of A in BMO should be small. And here, the smallness is uh, uh, written down precise, and this uh, fits uh, to uh, uh, the cases q uh, bigger to q smaller to. Yes, so this is uh, the minimum of one divided by q and one minus one divided by q. Then they have uh, the transfer of uh, regularity. And uh, here, this uh, is a little bit surprised at least for us uh, that uh, here we have the quantity, which is not the uh, norm of the weight, but the norm of its logarithm. Uh, and uh, that this condition seems to be sharp uh, in uh, terms of this Myers counter example, which I show, showed you in the previous uh, slide. So this is uh, uh, this is uh, to compare our result uh, with the result uh, of the previous quarters, and um, the the other interesting thing is that this version with a logarithm, it has a linear dependency in the small parameter, which you can see here. Yes, and uh, how we can get it. Uh, so uh, the reason is that we use uh, the different method. Uh, so, uh, and I think the next uh, slide, uh, I will show you this. Uh, so this is, um, uh, this uh, this is the reformulation in the sense, but uh, what is important here is that um, we consider the weight um, as a multiplier. So we do not uh, consider the space, uh, uh, weighted space as a space with the measure, where the weight is inside this measure, but uh, really we multiply the function by this weight and uh, measure everything in uh, usual L2 space. And this is uh, how uh, the space is defined. Uh, so this is uh, the space with a multiplier uh, omega squared, where omega uh, is uh, the uh, um, norm of the matrix M. And the reason why we do this is the following. So uh, this identity, which we use uh, several times in the proof, this is uh, very simple with respect to duality. So if one need to calculate the dual space of LP omega, this can be written down as a one divided by omega to the p prime, and that's. It. And the second reason is that the Mackenhaupt condition can be also rewritten in the in this form. Uh, so with the weight uh, omega to the power p. So uh, here you see the other way to write down the Mackenhaupt condition. 
Okay, so here, uh, this is uh, the several steps uh, we use. Uh, so uh, um, the main idea is uh, to use and define a logarithmic mean value uh, instead of usual mean value just defined here. And second, this is uh, this is quite standard step. So we will compare the solution uh, of this um, system with a variable coefficient, with the solution of the system with a uh, constant coefficient. And this freezing uh, uh, procedure is done by uh, going to the logarithmic mean value. Then it is also, as I wrote down in the previous slide, uh, this logarithmic mean value uh, is compatible uh, to, to duality in the following sense. So this is what is duality for this weighted spaces. And the simple property of the logarithm shows us that uh, if I want to take now the uh, mean value of the m to the power minus one, then I just need to divide one by this quantity. And here, uh, this is also uh, something well known. Uh, this is so-called uh, Jon Nirenberg type estimates, and uh, they uh, hold that true for all well, weights from the Mackenhout classes. And uh, maybe I mentioned also that uh, if uh, the uh, logarithm uh, of the weight is, has a small b one norm, it automatically implies that it is in the Mackenhout class. So we have all the theory of Mackenhout classes inside. OK, so this is just a slide explaining that the condition is sharp. And uh, here, the, uh, the example is the same. This is the Myers example. And uh, this, this matrix is even uniformly elliptic, as I uh, showed you before. So of course, it's also the generate elliptic. And moreover, the logarithm of uh, this matrix uh, is small. Uh, this is smaller than epsilon. And now what we get, we get that the gradient of u belongs to LQ for q bigger than two, if and only if the logarithm uh, m BMO is smaller than two divided by q. And this is exactly the uh, this is exactly the uh, the constant uh, uh, the Lebesgue exponent uh, which we uh, have. Uh, so even for non-degenerate weights, so this condition is sharp. How much time I have? Three minutes. Three. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, here maybe I uh, I just uh, skip uh, this and say saying something about uh, something about scaling invariance. So for the weighted equations, sometimes some conditions uh, are not scaling invariant in the sense that the right and the left hand side of the equation. Uh, different uh, different scaling when we uh, want to multiply them with t, and our condition, for example, is a scaling invariant. And the condition of you take just the weight measures in BMO, this is not. So this is not good from the point of view of PDE. Let's say, okay. And uh, then uh, maybe I uh, stop uh, here also with this uh, history slide. Uh, so uh, of co of course uh, the. Um, uh, regularity properties uh, uh, of the equations of this type was, was studied a lot. I want uh, to mention maybe uh, uh, here, I could not write uh, down uh, everything, but uh, uh, we followed the approach of Ivanets. This was important for us, so this paper of 82, which uh, was uh, uh, for our knowledge not so well known in the community. So in this paper, he proved um, uh, for uh, for a question without weight, uh, the um, this uh, gradient estimates using BMO Hardy duality, and this is the technique we used as well. And the most known is the paper by Casarelli Peral, uh, where they proved uh, uh, it uh, in uh, different method. And uh, there are here uh, many contributions, of course, uh, by several people when you want to take here the different space. Instead of LQ, you want to take BMO. This is results by the Benedetti Manfredi. And then for the weights, for example, we followed mostly the very nice paper by Kinoin and Ju, where they considered their weight in the space BMO. You can also take the other spaces, and I wrote down here uh, several names, and you can study these potential estimates. Uh, and uh, uh, here we can mention Kuzin and Johnny, Duza, Amali, and many others. And as we heard in the uh, first part of this uh, conference today, one can also study different uh, boundary value problems, like the Zaremba problem, which was in the talk of Chichkin. And uh, also, I can help the classes uh, and uh, how they uh, connected to the Hodor continuity. 
Okay, so this is our result for nonlinear case. So you see that for nonlinear case, so we have a Q bigger equal P, which is natural uh, restriction for the nonlinear equations in the sense. And uh, this I will skip. So this is uh, actually what uh, what is our proof is based on, um, how it depends on the small parameter and uh, why uh, the approach of Ivanets we use uh, can really uh, lead to the sharp example and this uh, Caffarelli peral uh, not really uh, and we also have a result on boundary required which is also sharp for the uh, Lipschitz domains with the spawn Lipschitz constant uh, this is the result um, collaboration with the uh, Bjorn and D from Seoul from South Korea and uh, uh, in preparation, we also study such uh, such mass type examples for non-local models, but this is a completely different topic. So thank you very much one more time. That's okay, all. thank you very much for your talk. Are there any questions or comments in the chat? If not the case, oh, okay. Okay, uh, and, uh, I have uh, a question. Uh, who is the author of uh, the idea of logarithm? Who is the author of idea of logarithm? So I think uh, the, um, the first situation was the following. Uh, so since this um, paper, it has uh, four authors. <laughs> I enjoyed it a bit, uh, a bit, let's say, later, and I think uh, this uh, was the uh, result uh, of uh, some discussions uh, of Lars, Raffaella, and Antonella. So this is the note. So, okay, thank you. Uh, was... Okay, if not more question, please thank the speaker again. Okay, and we 